Welcome guys, my name is Shabir and today we will talk about use case diagrams. The objective of this video is to explain to you what is a use case diagrams, what are the various components of use case diagrams and finally we'll wrap everything up with a practical example so when you walk away from this video you have a clear picture of what is a use case, the various components of it and how can you use them in a real life scenario. So let's get into what is use case diagrams. A use case diagram, it's basically a depiction, a graphical depiction of a system. So uh, suppose you have a very clear idea, a very beautiful idea, but you have no, I, when, whenever you try to explain it to someone, they're always lost or the, their, their thoughts are never aligned with you. This is where a use case diagrams would come in. It, what it does is it helps you break down your awesome idea into various components. So when you try to explain it to someone or when they see it, all right, they have a clear picture of what you're talking about. And in essence, every time when you develop these uh, small components that you have described, you're basically building your entire idea. So let's look at the various components of use case. Now, a use case diagram has actors, use cases itself, the relationships, and system boundaries. These are the main, the main four things that a use case diagram needs. We will look at each and every one of them in detail, uh, and I will also uh, demonstrate them to you in the practical examples so you will have a much better idea towards the end of this video. So, an actor. There are two types of actors. There are primary actors and secondary actors. Primary actors are the people uh, that initiate the use of the system. They're always depicted to the left of the system. Uh, these are the people that are interacting directly with our application. Secondary actor are actors are more reactionary. If the primary actor needs it, then that the secondary actor will in, uh, will get involved in it. Otherwise, it doesn't need to be. Now. An actor can be an external system, can be a person, can be um, a business process. Um, it's basically anything that's outside of your system that is interacting with your application. And uh, an actor, just like the name says it, it is depicted by the actor shape, a human shape. Now, the the actors we never give them we never give them specific names they're always categorized so if your application is interacting with customers you write the customer over here you don't write john the customer or jane the customer if your application interacts with administrator you write administrator you don't write john the administrator or jane the administrator you always categorize things let's look at use the use case itself a use case, it basically describes how the actor is going to achieve, uh, accomplish the specific uh, goal that he needs to accomplish within that system. And they're always depicted by oval shaped circles. We'll look at more the relationship between a base case and a, an include case or a general case in a specific case when we look at the practical example. Let's talk about the relationships. Now there's four types of relationships. There's association, include, extend, and finally generalization. An association between an actor and a use case indicates that the use case somehow interact or communicate with, e with each other. An include relationship shows dependency between a use case and an include case. Every time the base case is executed, the include case is executed as well. Again, if you're confused at this point, stick with me for the next two, a minute and a half to two, and I promise you when I show you the practical example, you will understand what I'm talking about. This thing, this stuff is not easy. Um, uh, the extend relationship, it's when the base case is executed, the extend case might sometimes be executed or they might not be. Now, the last relationship generalization. This is also known as an inheritance where the parent use case and a, where there's a parent use case and a child use case. The uh, child use case is more specific and the parent, just like the name mentions, it, it's, it, it includes the general content of it. Lastly, the various components. 
of uh, a system boundaries. Now, a system can, can be a website, software, application, a business process, or basically any idea that you can think of. Now, these are the gen, the, I'm, my background is from IT. So obviously I thought about all the stuffs that, that are involved in IT, but you can think of anything else and they can, it can be your system boundary. A system boundary is always represented by, uh, represented with a rectangle. It is important. It is very important to note that the system does not include the actors inside. The actors are always outside the system. So your primary actor goes to the left your secondary actor goes to the right of the system and the name of the system is always in the middle at the top inside the system all right now finally we're in the practical example and I promise you if you were confused up until now this will solve all your dilemma so uh, this practical example was taken from uh, the John Molson School of Business um, final exam of uh, the fall semester 2018 uh, for one of the courses um, and it basically says to uh, that you are building a tutoring application for students where they can search for tutors within their university or college and book appointments with them directly the student will use his or her student ID and password to log into the application and book appointments with a tutor of their own choice based on the search criteria now the secretary of the department will be responsible for maintaining the courses tutors and appointments within the application the secretary will also use the application to generate reports to preserve prepare the payrolls for the tutors who have attended their their reserved appointments all right so let's look uh, let's break down this application we know that there's two main actors that we need we need the students and we need the secretary all right within the students the functionality that he needs to do uh, he or uh, him or her that needs to do it's the student must be able to log in search for the tutor book an appointment and we'll give them an extra one delete an appointment as well the secretary she is basically acting as the administrator over here so she can add update remove course uh, add update delete tutor add update or delete appointments and finally she uh, he or she's able to generate the reports now if you see over here why do I have these three uh, uh, bullet points under search tutor because uh, I believe this the tutor okay so here the tutor is uh, sorry the student is able to search based on three criteria. they may search by program they may search by the course number or they may search by the section okay so without any further ado let's get into the practical uh, all right so here we have it we are going to start building our practical example uh, in our example we had uh, we had two actors a student and secretary the rectangle uh, shape over here represents our system the actors are outside of the system so let's begin by building the main functionality now if you remember correctly our main use cases were these guys over here the student should be able to log in uh, the student should be able to log in should also be able to search for tutor should also be able to book appointments and finally delete any appointments now every time the student tries to log in all right they need to make sure that their credentials are being verified so how do we do that we every time they log in we have to verify their credentials so this right here is an include relationship where the base use case runs which is our login and every time the base use case runs the include use case will always run and we depict this by an arrow a dotted arrow going from the base use case to the extent uh, to the include use case and we put include in the middle using double chevrons so let's do this like that 
Now, every time, uh, whenever the student tries to log in, they may sometimes enter the wrong password and will be redirected to uh, uh, an error page or asking them to they uh, asking them to uh, put back their credentials, the right ones. So here we de we depict this by an extend use case. So our base use case, our extend use case and the arrow now is going from our extend use case to our uh, base use case same thing as here but the other way around and there you go that's how we do it now uh, this is the same idea for uh, tutors So for tutors, so the the student can search the tutor by four by three means by program, course, and section. Uh, so again, it's an extend relationship. They may decide to search by program or by course or by section, or they can use a combination of all three. Um, now. Every time the student tries to book an appointment, the first thing that they have to do is actually search for the tutor. You can't book an appointment if you don't have a tutor. So again, there is an extend relationship between these two. And finally, for the student, whenever the, the he or she tries to delete the appointment, the appointment must exist beforehand for the student to be able to delete the appointment. So again, this is the extend use case, and this is the base use case in this case. In uh, the other example, this is the base use case, and this right here, is, sorry, this is the extend use case, and the search tutor is the base use case. So, there you go. That's how you would do it. So, we're done with the student for now. Now, let's go to the secretary, and the secretary, it is the same idea. So we have add courses. And then we have update or delete uh, courses. And they're depicted like this. Now, I have gone ahead and built up the whole uh, use case, so I won't do that. But and I'm gonna, but I'm gonna walk you through and show it to you to see what I did. You can have a better picture. So here it is. This is my final use case. So we have the students on this end, the student that is interacting with the application, the secretary on this end, and the secretary, as you can see, uh, it. it he or she's able to add the course, update the course, delete the course. Okay. The update cannot happen if the ad hasn't happened. The delete cannot happen if the ad hasn't happened. If the ad happens, then the, then she, he or she might decide to update or delete the course. That's why the relationship over here is an extent. Same thing when she, he or she tries to add the tutor the secretary might decide to update the tutor or delete the tutor but the add has to happen before the update or the delete happens again for the appointments if he or she is trying to add the appointment for someone then that's fine but she can only he or she can only update or delete the appointment if the add has happened if the add hasn't happened then you cannot de update or delete an appointment and finally, gen report does not depend on anything else. Okay, it, it is a simple functionality on its own. So that's why we have left it there on its own. Now, what I like to do is, I, as you can see, I've put it into different colors. So when somebody looks at the use case, they have a clear picture of what I'm talking about over here. Now, this is a more specific use case. What I personally like to do is put it in a general use case and I'm going to show you how to do that so all the common colors I put them in one so here all everything that has to do with login is going to go into one use case called login all this it's going to go into one use case called search uh, tutor this right here will go into a use case called appointment 
the add the courses will go into course tutor again appointment and finally generate report so let me show you how to do that so we delete all this delete this as well actually I might need a circle so I call this login let me remove the color so login then search tutor then appointment okay and the tutor is interacting with all this what is happening here there you go on the other hand for this one we have course tutor appointment and generate report so here we have course tutor appointment we don't need to add appointment because the appointment use case is already here so these two are going to be sharing this and then this one will call it generate report close by no, no 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 be nice come on come on computer be nice My computer is not collaborating with me today there you go and this is what we call a oh, great computers again are collaborating this is what I call a general you more general use case this is what I call a more specific use case now obviously this is it explains it much more in detail but again uh, this is they're both useful so when someone asks you to give them um, uh, the uh, to explain your idea draw them a general use case and if they need more explanation then go ahead and draw them your more specific uh, use case now thank you for watching and I appreciate you staying around around for all this time if you have any questions or comments please leave them in the section below and I will try to get to your questions or comments uh, as soon as possible. Do give this video a like and share it if you found it useful um, and there will be more videos releasing. Uh, I will be releasing more videos every Sunday. So uh, click on the subscribe button to stay tuned. So when you, whenever I release a video, you're notified about them. Thank you very much and have a good day.